external ear includes the pinna or the oracle. This is called the oracle. Do you know? Uh, have you learned any other oracle? No? You have not learned it into one? Come on. Yeah, literal meaning here. Here apart. Okay? And then this is the opening into the auditory tube, external auditory tube called the external auditory meatus. This one. This is the region we put a Q-tube and we feel good. <laughs> oh, it feels good. Yeah? Feels good. <laughs> but if you push it any farther, what will happen? Break your you may You may damage your eardrum or the tympanic membrane or the tympanum. Okay? So here ends the external ear. And then, here beyond this, you have this internal auditory tube or the eustachian tube. This is the eustachian tube. Now, the middle ear is represented by three bony, three pieces of bone called bony ossicles or middle ear ossicles. What happens when the sound, sound waves will make the tympanic membrane vibrate? These vibrations are relayed to the internal ear by these three pieces of bones and the three pieces are like this. This one is called malleus. This is called the incus and this is called the stapes. Malleus incus stapes. These are biological term, but there are English words for this. Malleus is also known as hammer. Incus anvil. Stapes stirrup. Okay. Now, I would like to tell you some evolutionary history of these three bones. As a matter of fact, during our development, when the lower jaw is being formed, the skull forms, the lower jaw is made of four pieces of bones. And one of the pieces is dentary that remains as mandible. This is dentary. And the three pieces are incorporated inside the skull as middle ear ossicles. Okay? Now, these three pieces are still there in the jaw of crocodile, in the jaw of lizard, in the jaw of other reptiles, also in the jaw of frog. But in mammals, these three pieces are incorporated inside, okay? You have to know the correct sequence. I mean, if you know the correct sequence, then you should be able to identify which one is which. How it goes from outside to inside? The malleus incus tapis. So that if any pieces, any of these pieces, is pinned, is labeled, you should be able to identify. Make no mistake, I'm not going to tell you which one I will put this here, <laughs> but it will be one of these three. Malleus, Incus, and Stapes. Do you get that? Make no mistake. Yes? The picture inside the book, it says Stapes in oval window. Does that okay. matter? Stapes in oval window, I will tell you, the oval window of the vestibule, mm -hmm. like this is the, this is the magnification of the internal ear. Mm -hmm. Can you see here an oval window? Uh -huh. And another round window. Mm -hmm. The function of round window is different, but 
Here, the step is attached to the oval window. So the vibrations are relayed through the oval window. Okay. You get that? Mm -hmm. And then that will be carried to the internal ear. This is a cochlea. This, this part is called cochlea. Snail-like, you know. It's not snail-shaped. Mm -hmm. This is the hearing part. The hearing part that is called organ of corky that is located inside the cochlea. You don't have to identify organ of corky. Because I don't want you to, oh my goodness, I don't, I didn't want her recording me saying all these things. I cut that out. Every time you drop something, I hit it because I don't want to, I don't want to make you look bad. You can keep it. Yeah. You can keep it for your later um, entertainment. <laughs> You can entertain yourselves, okay? Let's let's watch Dr. M. <laughs> yeah? World's funniest videos. So, I, I, I'll come to this later on. So these three pieces of middle ear ossicles, you must know. Yeah? And all the features that I told you, they are very important. So here, in the internal ear, you see three semicircular canals, and this is vestibule. Especially these semicircular canals and vestibule, they are concerned with balance. The receptors that are concerned with balance are called proprioceptors. Okay? So the proprioception is carried out mostly by the internal ear, semicircular canals. Each semicircular canal has a solen end called ampulla. Now this will be, this will come handy. Can you see? This is the anterior or superior, okay? This is the posterior and this is the lateral. You have uh, uh, a key to this model called labyrinth, okay? It looks like a labyrinth, looks like a maze. It's in a bony encasing called bony labyrinth, enclosing the membranous part called membranous labyrinth. So this is the bony part of the semicircular canal, this is the membranous part of the semicircular canal. And look at each end, ampulla, ampulla, ampulla. So when we just about to fall, what happens? The fluid inside the membrane, membranous labyrinth called endolymph, endolymph flows into the ampulla, and there are the proprioceptors, there are the receptors, and those receptors are stimulated, and the, they generate nerve impulses. Nerve impulses travel along the vestibular nerve, this is coming from vestibule, vestibular nerve, and then to vestibular cochlear nerve, and then to the cortex, cerebral cortex, where it is translated that there was something wrong, yeah? Some correction has to be made, and we correct our posture. Do you get that? That is the way it works. So, the different parts. This portion I'm holding is vestibule. When you remove a portion of the bone, the vestibular chamber that contains two structures, two membranous sacs, one upper one is called utricle, and this one is called saccule. You need to know, utricle, saccule. Okay? You have that in internal ear. Okay? These are semicircular canals. Each one is ampulla, plural ampullae. And this is cochlea. So, the vibrations, look here, will be relayed through the oval window into this cochlear tube here, and then to cochlea, where there are receptors 
Those cells are called hair cells that are responsible for hearing. Hair, H-A-I-R, hair. hair, this hair. I, I cannot show much, you know, I don't have much hair. <laughs> All right, and then, so those hair cells, they will be stimulated, they will generate impulses that will travel through the cochlear nerve and then to vestibular cochlear and then to the auditory area of the cerebral cortex and that will be translated as hearing. Okay? All right? Have I mentioned all the parts that you can see? Paul, have I covered everything? Um, yes, it looks good. Very good. What are the And sacum. Sacum. S-S-C-U-L-E, sacum. And you can see the uticular nerve. Look, look here. Uticular nerve, secular nerve. One extra thing you must know that might come in the bonus. This is called vestibular ganglion. This one. Vestibular ganglion and then vestibular nerve. Okay? Vestibular ganglion, vestibular nerve. But I, if I want you to identify vestibular cochlear nerve or the auditory nerve, then I should put the pin flag in between the vestibular and cochlear. Do you get that? That's the nerve. Yeah, here. Yeah. That's the, this is the vestibular cochlear nerve. Mm -hmm. This is vestibular, this is cochlear. But in the middle here, you can see the separation. If it is on the separation, I mean both. So both will be vestibular cochlear. Just vestibular cochlear nerve. Oh, okay. It is the eighth cranial nerve. You have to know that too. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes. 